Praise the Lord. I am Pastor J.B. Norman, Jr., and this is my lovely wife, First Lady Dolores G. Norman, and we are from the Rivers of Living Water Faith Church, inviting you to one of our powerful packed services, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and Sunday morning at 11 a.m., 309 J.B. Norman, Jr. Drive. Always remember, we love you, and God loves you, too. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm J.B. Norman, Jr. We want you to stay tuned. Do not turn your dial. Now, the saints need to be perfected. And you need to be prepared to do what? Work a ministry. You all told me why you all was here. So now, is it really? Is that really why you all here? Huh, let me know. You're mighty quiet. Is that really here? Or are you here to get your knees met? Huh? Or are you here to get your knees met? Now, that's okay. Because you learn faith. How to trust God. You understand? Now, um, last couple of Sundays we talked on 300, uh, 300 years of revival. And revival is when God puts a truth in the earth. He established a truth in the earth to the body of Christ and he expects you to embrace it. Most of the time that truth is, is revealed or revelation of truth is revealed outside of the four walls of the church. But eventually it osmosis itself into the church. We talked about revival. And revival is when God established a what truth. We talked about Simo. We talked about the healing revival. Uh, we talked about uh, the Wesley revival. We talked about uh, the revival of um, uh, uh, the evangelist, the healing revival. And and we talked about the different men that was associated with these revivals. God used a man to to bring in a revival. All the way up to where we are today. He had um, the the, the um, Word of Faith movement. Word of Faith movement where he had teachers teaching on all subjects of the Bible. Anything that we should know concerning our lives. He told them that he raised up different teachers. And as a result of that teaching ministry, he moved on to the exhortation ministry to exalt you. He had, uh, in the teaching ministry, he had uh, Dr. Price, uh, he had uh, uh, Jerry Savelle, he had also had uh, Kenneth Copeland, he had, uh, just name a few, uh, just name a few, and he had uh, Kenneth Hagin. Uh, and he had what you call a charismatical revival. And a charismatical revival is God jumped the four walls of the church. He jumped the nomination, he jumped over denominationalism because denominations uh, don't teach you how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit give utterance. So what God did, he started moving upon the nominational churches, the Baptist traditional churches, Methodist, you all know what the, the, the traditional churches, and begin to fill people with his Spirit yes. and his power. How many know God can do anything he wants to do? Mm -hmm. Sometimes God does things uh, that without you being involved. So I'm a product of the charismatic movement. I'm a product of uh, uh, the Pentecostal movement, the divine healing movement. I came from the pastor, Ruby Kyle. She moved in the gifts of the spirit and the healing. That was only, I got, I got in on the edge, the end of that movement. Now, always remember when God brings forth a movement, he expects it to be integrated where in the church and he wants it to stay in the church. 
okay out of that charismatic movement I mean, pros I mean a, a Pentecostal movement uh, I learned how to evangelize I learned how to listen to God I learned how to move in the manifestations of God's spirit learn how to get people saved learn how to get people uh, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit then came along the charismatic movement to straighten out different things that people were doing wrong in the uh, 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 doing wrong in the uh, what, what movement? Doing wrong in the Pentecostal movement, and uh, the Pentecostal movement has some flaws in it. All movements has flaws. You got it. Uh, has some flaws in it. And those flaws was you know you couldn't be saved unless you filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized in Jesus' name, but that was incorrect. You had to tarry. All that was incorrect. All righty. You don't have to tarry for the Holy Spirit because he's already here. The first original had 12 had to what? Tarry. And tarry means to wait for the Holy Spirit. Correct? So, uh, the Word of Faith movement, teaching movement, corrected all of that. They said that you wouldn't save if you wore lipstick and, and earrings. You said you had a Jezebel a bell spirit. And man, that's man, that's hell, ain't it? <laughs> oh, I can't be saved, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm wearing lipstick and I'm wearing earrings. God don't put no for God so little word that he gave. His only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in the son shall not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Isn't that correct? Yeah. Correct. And you say what you had on or what you wearing and all of that. He didn't say that. Can't wear no rings, can't wear no jewelry. You know what I'm Just look ugly. You see what I'm saying? Excuse me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord, man. Pastor Norman start already messing with folks. But I'm not going to be alone. <laughs> I'm not going to be alone with you. You know what I'm saying? So, so he straightened all that out through the teaching movement. Then here comes the exhortation movement. He used Bishop Jakes, yeah. T.D. Jakes, to exalt us. Yeah. You know, to exalt us in Joel Osteen. To do what? The ministry of exhortation. Edification, exhortation, and what comfort, you see. And here come along now the, and we talked about the apostle, but here come along the prophet's ministry. And every time a move, God put a truth in there, everybody want to be that truth. Everybody want to lead that truth. So here comes the prophet movement, so everybody want to be a prophet. Everybody wants to be a prophet. Now, uh, you might not have the ministry gift of a prophet, but you can prophesy. Okay. All right. Now we we got down to the ministry of a what? Of the prophet. Now, the prophet is a one that number one he teaches, or he what? He preaches. Teacher or a preacher. Okay, not just calling out words of knowledge or the revelation gifts or the word of wisdom, but first he's a what? Teacher. And he's a preacher first. Now, the prophet, he's supposed to prepare you to do work of ministry, correct? Now, if he's supposed to prepare you to do work of ministry, he's supposed to teach you how to heal God. Okay? He's supposed to teach you how to what? Heal God, the ways that God speak. Now, I found very few prophets teaching you how to heal God. We should have Bishop Jordan here, Prophet Bernard Jordan. He used to be here. He used to come here and have, have revivals for us. Now he taught, he was one that taught you how to heal God. He had the school of the prophets. He taught that. He's the first one, I picked him up from the uh, airport and we was going to the church. We was in the storefront church. And he told me he, had, he has a tremendous uh, revelation gift of a word of wisdom. He told me just out of the blue, Pastor, we are going to have a black president. 
I thought it was crazy. <laughs> Back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Prophet moves in what you call revelation gifts. Revelation gifts is a word of what? Wisdom, word of knowledge, and designing of spirits. They operate in consistent revelation gifts. And revelation gifts are gifts that's re things that's revealed. Now, God knows everything. Now, just think about it's the Holy Spirit and his gifts, his revelation gifts. No one, now, God gives what? What does God give? He gives ministry gifts. So that means that I can operate in that ministry gift anytime I get ready because it's my what? Gift. How many got a pen? You have a pen. Or, or you got an iPhone. Or that. That's yours. Correct? That's yours. Whether it was a gift from you, you bought it, or someone else gave it to you. Okay. Now can't you use it when you get ready? You can use that when you get ready, right? Now, God has, if, if, if he has given the prophet a ministry gift to teach and preach, he can do it what? Anytime. Do a little fasting, a little praying, a little studying of the word, and then get up and the anointing to teach or preach is on that individual as a what? As a prophet. Because he gave him that what? Gave him that gift. Now, he did not give the prophet revelation gifts. He didn't give him a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, or designing the spirits. Those gifts belong to who? The Holy Spirit. Huh? They are his what? Gifts. Okay, so now as a result, what happens? The prophet can yield and has more consistent revelation gifts than just the regular people that's in the pews of the regular church or the layman. It's more of a consistent, that means what it comes what more frequently. But that does not mean you don't have, you do not have revelation gifts too. You have revelation gifts too. Correct, I'm in a dream in here. All right, I'm in a see vision. Okay, those are revelations that God's trying to do what? Trying to get to you. That's good. He's trying to get it to you. Hmm? He's trying to teach you how to hear him and move in the revelation gifts, not only for you, but the gifts are for what? To profit and benefit people and benefit mankind. Now, profit moves in more what? He yields to these gifts. He don't own them. It's no secret. God does not have secrets or hold back things. A lot of times in the old, they said, what well, the, the revelation gift, they was a secret. And just only a few had the revelation gifts. But they really didn't know what they had. But they were supposed to be teaching others how to receive revelation gifts. Because they are not the what? You're not the only. I'm not gifted. I'm gifted to teach. You got it? Sometimes the preacher anointing comes very rarely. But I'm, I'm gifted to what? Teach. I can teach all the time. Any time of the day. I can teach. Okay? Okay. But the revelation gifts, they are not mine. I yield to the person of the Holy Spirit. The personality of the Holy Spirit, those are his characteristics, those are his manifestations. And he desires to use those manifestations to make himself what known makes himself visible and make himself tangible he's subject to the what touch tangible that means you can do what you can see hmm? you can feel the manifestations of the Holy Spirit yeah. so you yield to the personality of the Holy Spirit and he does what he uses your vessel to demonstrate 
his gifts or his manifestations through man, through healing. And they are really, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. He's the Spirit of Jesus. A lot of people say, well, man, I wish Jesus was here. He is here. Mm -hmm. He is here in the manifestations of his what? Spirit. Spirit of Jesus can be right with you. Matter of fact, he's in you. Hmm? He's in you. Huh? A permanent dwelling place in you. Say so he'll never leave you or forsake you. He's in you. And he comes upon you and anoints you to demonstrate his ability. Demonstrate his personality. When you see healing, that's the what? Manifestation of the personality of Jesus. That means Jesus is in our midst. Hmm? So you can yield to what? Yield to these manifestations of God's spirit. Okay? Because he wants to use you. God wants to demonstrate himself through you. He has to have a vessel he can use. The Holy Spirit has to have a vessel to use to manifest. And we're talking about manifesting these revelation gifts. He has to have a vessel to use. Okay? Now... The, the prophet has a more consistent uh, revelation gifts. Revelation gifts constantly. He has the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom is the supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning the divine purpose in the mind and will of God always speak toward the future. You have the word of knowledge, the supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God um, concerning people places and things always present and always past the present he knows about your presence the present of what you have gone through what you going through now he knows he knows about your past yeah. he knows about your past he knows something that you have done that don't nobody else know you did it in secret what? Hmm? But he'll never embarrass you. Huh? <laughs> President, I don't hear nobody. <laughs> I'm just talking. Huh? <laughs> he knows about your present. He knows about your what? Past. He knows what you're thinking now. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows what will happen on down the line. Huh? He knows through a what? Word of knowledge. Reveal knowledge. Now the Holy Spirit, man, he's all he's powerful. You have a person, man, a spirit being, he's a person, he's not a it, that knows everything. Man, that's just boggled my mind. It just messed my little old mind up. Knows everything about every person in here. And all over the world. Everything. Now that's awesome. Now he, if he choose to reveal that to someone, he'll manifest himself and you'll know that that's not that person. You'll know that's the Holy Spirit using that person to manifest a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge. Now discerning of spirits. Spiritual or supernatural insight into the realm of spirits. Seeing into the spirit realm of the spirit world. It's a world out there that is a spiritual world. Has angels, humans, people, places, and things in it. Animals. Everything. Demons. The devil. It's in the spiritual realm. Okay? God can open your eyes and let you see in the what? Spiritual realm. And the spiritual realm is more powerful than the natural realm because the spiritual realm where God lives and God said let there be light and it was. What you see in the natural realm does not exist or did not come from the natural realm. It came from the spiritual realm. It came from God. Yeah. Correct? Correct. 
the benches that you're sitting on came from the spiritual realm. Okay? All right, and now, uh, the prophet is one who has visions and revelations. Uh, like I said, you all might have manifestations of these revelation gifts. Sometimes, okay? But the prophet has them on a consistent basis. Now, there are three types of revelations and three types of visions. And revelation means to reveal. You have three types of visions. You have what you call a spiritual vision. Spiritual vision, a person that sees where in his spirit, and as a result of seeing the vision in his spirit, it pops up where into his what mind or into his imagination. God uses the imagination realm. The imagination realm is not just for the dirt of the devil, dirty stuff. You notice the enemy shows you pictures? That's why God said, cast down what every evil imagination that exalted itself against the word of God. How I many have had evil pictures this morning? Praise the Lord, me, so everybody else lied. <laughs> huh? The devil tried, you didn't obey him, but he put it in your mind. He put something in your mind that wasn't right. Now, before you leave here, you understand. I mean, even in here in the church today. That's right, Pastor. That's right. No, that's you were right. seeing crazy stuff in the church. Correct? In your mind. But God uses that what? Same facility to show you dreams, show you pictures, and give you dreams. Okay? Uh, you have a. Uh, uh, you have him Saul on the road of Damascus in relating his experience he said that when this happened his eyes was blind he could not see Paul didn't see the Lord with his physical eyes he saw in the spiritual realm later Ananias prayed for Paul that he might receive his what? Natural sight. Okay? And you also have uh, the second highest type of vision is when you fall into a trance. Oh, I get a lot of minds through trances. That means when your physical senses are suspended and you're in what you call a spiritual coma. You don't know where you are. Mm -hmm. And you, God is showing you what things. Praise the Lord. Okay? Also, you have what you call um, the highest type of vision is when your eyes are open and your physical senses are not suspended. You, you are aware of your surroundings. In a trance, you're not aware of your surroundings. But in a spiritual vision, you're aware of your around, uh, surroundings and you're just looking, looking just like on a motion picture. picture screen. Okay? Now, there has been uh, there has been uh, some error. Now, I've been around the prophets for years. Uh, my former pastor could say was a prophet. Prophetess uh, Bishop Jordan was here, Prophet Hongo. I've been around the best. And I studied after the best prophets. You know, some people don't know what they're talking about. Okay, people have uh, just crazy stuff about, you understand, that and the enemy uh, is using a person when he calls your name and your address. But you're talking about the Holy Spirit. Saying that you should know your name and address. Yeah, I should know. I do know it. That's but right. the person that God is revealing it to don't know it. That's right, right. You see, but God uses, a, uh, uh, he says, a word of what? Knowledge. A fragmentation or part of what God knows. God knows everything about you. If you want to re reveal your address, okay. Mm -hmm. You want to reveal your name, okay. Your passport, that's okay. He want to reveal your destiny. 
that's what? That's okay, right? If he won't reveal what you're going to eat today, that's okay. If he going to want to reveal uh, where you're going to travel to the next year, that's what? That's okay. If he want to reveal your job description, he won't reveal to you, are you going to get another job? That's okay. He knows what? Here. Everything. So that'll stimulate my what? Faith. Isn't that right? That's right. Now I say what? A word of knowledge, a fragmentation, a part of what God what, knows. This is part of the prophet's ministry. Right? Now, he might not use a prophet, and he used a prophet in certain categories. He might use a prophet. What he does, what he's doing is, God always, he exalts and he brings certain things to the forefront. Now, I believe the reason why he uses prophets now for names and addresses, because he wants to magnify the revelation gift. He wants to build it up. He wants to magnify it. You see. Um, God might give you a, give me a revelation of, of uh, what you're thinking. I get revelations of people, what they're thinking, what they're saying, what you're talking about. You're talking about in secret. He might do that. He might give me a revelation of who you, who's not good for you. Hmm? You might be dating somebody and they're not good for you. Hmm? He try to help you out yes. as much as he can. Okay? He might be trying to extract, not to try to try to judge you or anything. God knows who's good for you. Hmm? And he knows who's not good for you. He knows who who the enemy using to deceive you. Yeah. Correct? You might not know. Because you might be hyped up on flesh. You might look at the woman's, you might be looking at the woman's shape. But that ain't no personality. You got it? It ain't all shape, dude. Correct? Correct. You might be looking at this man's job. Hmm? How much money he making? What type of ride he riding in? Huh? But that don't mean nothing. You understand if he's trying to use these tools to deceive you. You need to know his personality. Huh? Because you wake up one morning and you find out you married a devil. You married a demon. Hmm? And, and you married a demon, hit a, hit, a, hit a coffee pot on, you understand, and then instead of you, understand, getting you some coffee, and putting your head, you don't, we said, wait a minute here, I need to go in here, I'm tired, I'm tired of him, I'm tired of him, and pour hot water, scarlet water on him. <laughs> then the first thing you holler is, God, why you let me, no, he tried to. Keep you away from them. Hmm? So God know what? He know everything about you. Correct? He know what you're thinking. Uh, so certain prophets have certain uh, words of knowledge that they have. A prophet don't know everything. He notice he said a word of knowledge. A, word. a prophet might be good or have a word of knowledge concerning names. I have a word of knowledge concerning healing hmm? and numbers, prosperity. You know, he might have certain what categories concerning. Praise the Lord. I am Pastor J.B. Norman, Jr., and this is my lovely wife, First Lady Dolores G. Norman, and we are from the Rivers of Living Water Faith Church, inviting you to one of our powerful packed services, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and Sunday morning at 11 a.m., 309 J.B. Norman, Jr. Drive.
always remember we love you and God love you too.